Hi friends, Mickey here. It's Monday again. Just keeps on happening every seven days or so. And that means a few things. Number one, I am very tired. And number two, today is part five in my video series on how to cover a song. Today we're gonna be tackling how to add dynamics and interest into your performance. So this is a big topic. I'm going to try to keep it short. My videos have been getting longer and longer and we're going to try to avoid that today. So let's jump right in. Cheers. So what are dynamics? Dynamics simply means how intensely or loud you sing. And you can sing all the way from very whispery and quiet to very, very loud and forcefully. When I think about dynamics, I like to pull from classical music. I was trained as a classical pianist first and they just have a very neat framework. So let's define some terms. Classical music draws from Italian for its dynamics. And I've created a little ghetto drawing here, as you can see, to assist me. And I'm gonna put up an image of a neater diagram so that you can look at that in a moment. we're basically working off of two extremes, loud and soft. So piano, just like the instrument, piano signified by P means soft. And then forte, which we abbreviate F from the word forceful means loud. And then along this continuum, we're going from very loud to very soft. So if we start on this end, we have pianississimo, which is very, very, very soft. And then we have pianissimo, which is soft, softer than piano. Piano is soft. Then we have mezzo piano, which is eh, kind of soft, getting louder. So mezzo is like meh, kind of. And then mezzo forte, MF, is meh, kind of loud. Forte is getting louder, so loud. Fortissimo is even louder than loud. Fortississimo is super, super loud. And you can actually continue going and just stack on more Fs on this end and more Ps on the soft end. So you just keep going for infinity until your ears start bleeding and your head explodes. You see, most, most blows, you're going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Um, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. So why are dynamics important in music? The same way that we use intensity and volume variations when we talk to convey emotions, we do the same in music. So if I'm really angry, I'm going to speak in a very loud stentorian tone. I'm gonna say, hey, why did you eat that last chocolate donut? I wanted that and now I'm gonna kill you. Are you little? On the other hand, if I want to convey something that's more intimate and I want to draw somebody in, like if I'm talking to a lover and I say, hey, guess what? I really love you, right? That kind of draws them in with this whispery, quiet tone. It creates a lot more drama and emotion than if I'm just talking in a monotone like a robot. So the same is true of singing. You don't want to have this very monochromatic performance that's going to be very boring for your audience and for you. You want to modulate the intensity and the volume and use different colors and timbres of tone to create a performance that's really alive and exciting. So in music, we employ crescendos and diminuendos. And what that looks like is like Pac-Mans, basically. So when you have a crescendo, you have a Pac-Man that's growing, so your intensity or your volume is increasing gradually. On the other side, we have our Pac-Man that's facing the other way, and this is our diminuendo. And this means that you're gradually decreasing in volume. Okay, so now that we've defined our terms and we've explained why dynamics are important, let's apply this to an actual song. Today I'm gonna to be working on an original song that I wrote when I was 13 called The Light. And the reason that I chose this song is because it has a lot of dramatic 
volume and intensity changes, so you'll be able to see the full dynamic range. What I do when I work on any song is I print out the lyrics, and then I identify the different song parts in the form. So I know here I have an instrumental intro, then my first verse, then a chorus, then my second verse, another chorus, an instrumental solo section, half a verse, and then a bunch of choruses out to the end of the song. And I'll do another video explaining how to identify the different parts of a song form, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna go through the song and we're gonna assign a dynamic value to each of the song sections. And that's gonna start to create a dynamic map for us to create a really exciting performance. So I've got my trusty Gibson CL40 acoustic here, and I've got a Daddario headstock tuner on there. Always make sure you tune. For those of you guitar students out there, I have a cute little saying to remember the order of the strings. It's elephants and donkeys grow big ears. So if you take the first letter of each word, it gives you the strings going from the low E to the high E. And these tuners are great. They, they tune very, very quickly. No more relying on your ear to do things. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Here's our instrumental intro. Here's verse one. So I started singing that kind of quietly, but not super whispery. So I would place that in like a piano range. And there were certain lines where I wanted to give accent to. So I made them more of a mezzo piano. I kind of popped those a little bit. And there were certain words that I pulled back a little bit on and gave it more of a, a pianissimo. So this is like a piano tone. You speak. When I go to immortal till death, that's more of a, a mezzo piano, right? I am, it's more of a pianissimo. Just breath. And I could sing this whole thing pianissimo or even pianissimo if I really wanted to get people's attention in the beginning and they're like, Oh my God, what's that? What's going on? You know? I am just breath. Then I'm going to crescendo. to my first chorus. I see the light. It's not far. It's all right. Just close your eyes and present your life. So whatever I've been using dynamically in the verse, I'm probably going to bump it up to the next level for the chorus because the chorus is supposed to really move and be uplifting, especially in this song because it's a pretty uplifting chorus in terms of its lyrics. And so if I was singing in a pianissimo on the first verse, I would bump it up to a piano. If I was singing in piano, I would bump it up to a mezzo piano, right? Now 
I'm in verse two. So let's say for the sake of argument that we started verse one using pianissimo. So we're gonna use that really whispery, kind of intimate sound. And then when we get to the first chorus, we're gonna be using piano. And then we get back to that verse two, that first line is gonna be back down to pianissimo. You're alive. Right now we're in verse two. Enraged and shame and rapture in pain, deep sleep. No, 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 no. So what you're seeing in the second verse is that you don't have to just take a block of the song form and keep it all the same volume. I'm punching certain words, I'm pulling back on other words to try to demonstrate emotionally what each word means to me. So the first word, enraged, when I'm angry, I'm gonna speak louder, right? If you stole my donut, I'm gonna yell at you. So on that one, enraged, I'm really gonna give a little bit more of a mezzo forte kind of feel, right? And then I'm gonna pull back to that mezzo piano, enchained. And then I have this really uplifting word, enraptured. Enraptured! So I really wanna bring up the energy to make people feel that enraptured, that bliss. So for that one, I'm gonna go back to mezzo forte again. And then I'm gonna pull back on that in pain. In pain. So I really am gonna do like a pianissimo just to really make interest there. And then deep sleep, no, no, no. That's more of like a piano. Long gone. Then I have another punch. Wish me luck. Give up. And another pullback. So a mezzo forte and a pianissimo. And now we're at chorus number two. And since this is our second chorus, I wanna give it a little bit more volume in life. So my first chorus was at piano. So this one is gonna be at mezzo, pian uh, mezzo forte, excuse me. So we have our... So that's the first time that I'm really gonna use a forte because I'm doing some scatting and it's very emotional, there's no words, and so I have to be extra dynamic in order to keep people's attention. And then I'm gonna pull back for my last half verse. I am scared of, very, very quiet, right? My So right there I have, I am scared of, very, very quiet, pian I would do pianissimo there. My hands in, back to like a mezzo forte, the dark piano. And now we're gonna have our outro choruses. So this is where you're really gonna build the intensity. Our last chorus was at uh, mezzo forte. So let's start this chorus at forte and let's go all the way up to fortississimo. And then on the last line of the song, we're really going to draw back to a, uh, pian a pianissimo. Okay. So let's see what that sounds like. I see the light. It's not far. It's all
that's a technique that I like to employ to really create drama in my songs is that really stark contrast where you build and build and build and then you fall off a cliff into almost nothingness. So I actually went from like a fortississimo there to like a pianississimo. It's a very, very stark change in volume. And what that does is it really keeps the audience interested and captures their attention. It's unexpected and it makes your performance more exciting. Now that we've gone through the song and we've created dynamics for each section of the song, I would draw a picture of the dynamic map and the progression. So I've done that here. And you can see we start out piano, we grow to mezzo forte, we go back down to piano, we grow to forte, we go to mezzo forte, we go all the way up to fortississimo, the apex of the song in those final courses, and then we drop down to pianississimo. And so this gives me an idea of how the arc of the song progresses. And each time I perform it, I now have this guide that's gonna help me give a really interesting and dynamic arresting performance. I'm gonna link at the end of this video to an actual live performance of this song. It's me and my partner AR performing at Union Square Guitar Center in New York City. And that way you'll really be able to see all of this taken out of the realm of the theoretical and applied to a live performance. I hope that this video is helpful for you now that you've seen my, my way of kind of dissecting a song and making it exciting. And of course, you can take this to the really micro level and go down to the single word or phrase level and assign a dynamic value to each of those and really play around. And that's when we get into really advanced performance technique. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you back here next week for part six of this series on how to cover a song. Thank you so much. I love you so much. And until then, happy singing.